Hi everyone, Kelly here from Kelly Chassis Fine Art. And what I'd like to show you is a demo painting that I've done and show you a little bit about a wet on wet technique that I use. So I've got a blending solution bottle here and you can see I'm really dumping a lot on here. This paper is quite wet. And that really is the key to getting a wet and wet background without it drying on you. And the other thing is using a lot of ink. So you can see I've put in, you know, I've squirt this bottle quite heavy on here. And that's really the key to giving yourself time to kind of work the, um, the painting a little bit. And you want to make sure that you've got a lot of ink and a lot of blending solution on here to give yourself enough time to kind of play around with it and get it the way you want. There's a lot of times if you, um, don't use enough ink or you don't use enough blending solution it dries before you get what you want and then what happens is you get all of these streaks so you can see here how much ink I have on here and how much blending solution this is quite wet and this is going to take some time to dry and I do want to show you the entire dry process because this video is roughly 10 minutes long um, all in all so I actually get this painting done in 10 minutes so I challenge you to try to do this very quickly don't fuss over it too much or and think about it too much just kind of get your inks down there I want you to learn the process of this and the technique um, and then worry about kind of making changes and doing some, some things to it uh, maybe the second or third time that you've tried it but you can really work fast and that's that's the key to these beautiful backgrounds these nice soft backgrounds if you want to add some details to it later you can always do that once the background dries but if you um, if you're looking for that more smooth look you don't want to like at this point if I were to add more ink to this right now it really wouldn't do a whole lot because this is so wet already it would just kind of blend back in and you can see how I'm making these streaks with my brush here and it's just kind of filling right back in. I've got a little bit of texture in there, which which I like because I want to do a nice little rolling hill on this one. Um, but I don't have any of those blooms that you get with alcohol inks. And if you've watched, uh, for example, the dragonfly video, there's a lot of blooming in that one, a lot of dots and um, a lot of texture and stuff in that one. So you can see again, I'm still trying, I'm just kind of moving this around and, and I still have plenty of time to kind of play with this and get this really cool background in here. So if you don't like what you have, um, and you can see where some of this is poured off the edge of my paper here, um, you know, you can kind of keep moving these back and forth until, um, until you like it really, if you, ha if you have it wet enough. So, and again, I can see where it's quite thick up here and I just kind of wipe that off and just tip it again and this will kind of clean that edge right up. So I think I'm going to be um, moving on to some clouds here now. I've, I like the colors in this one and um, it's still wet enough where I can add the white snow cap to this now to make the clouds with it still being able to bloom. So I'm going to draw that line again. And this is a great thing too when it's wet like this. If you kind of want to just kind of feel out your painting and where you're going to go with it, um, a lot of it fills back in. So you can kind of just play with with um, your concept or, or your uh, shape or your design at this point. So you can see where this again is filled back in, but I got a little bit of texture in here where the brush is. And again, it's a little heavy on the top, so you can just kind of take your brush and just take out that extra paint. That is once you get the set where you want it. If you take off all of the paint too early, then you'll be back to square one where it's gonna dry faster on you because you've moved most of that excess ink off of your paper already. All right, so I'm gonna go in with, um, this is Blanco. You can also use Snowcap for this. And again, I went very heavy with the inks on this. And again, I don't want this to dry really fast. So it's a lot of, uh, a lot of fluid on here, a lot of ink on here. And I'm just doing this little circular motion for the clouds. And again, drawing that same line, kind of figuring out what I want to do with this one. And I think I'm going to add some trees to this. So um, I just want to bring a little bit of that color, a little bit of that white down in a little bit further because I'm going to be doing some pitch black for that. And I don't know if I told you this at the beginning, but I used uh, sailboat blue and citrus for my colors. 
for this one. So, and I think those those come in a kit together if you you buy the kit of three along with um, I think it's watermelon that comes with it, which looks really great with it as well. So I've got the clouds in. You can see they're still kind of moving around in there. It gives this really cool effect. And again, if you if I were to go over this and over this more, it would blend it in. I'd lose that that um, definition of the clouds because it would all turn to to that lower green color. Um, and you want it thick enough so that you can set it where you want it and let it have enough uh, dry time to kind of settle back in. So now I've gone ahead and added some pitch black to this and again it's still wet so you can see how this blooms nicely. Blooms and blends all at the same time if that makes sense. And I'm just kind of tapping in my little fine brush to make the tips of these trees on here. And you can kind of see how far it's going to go down as you're painting it in. And I like that nice little separation because it almost looks like some highlights or some shadows of these trees down here. And I think once um, I've got my trees in here, I may do the shadow down underneath as well. Now I'm actually lifting the paint out with my brush here. You can see that's coming back to the white. So if you want to have, uh, what do you call it? It looks like a photo look. Um, I can't think of what the name of it is. <laughs> but uh, when you have like a negative, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, you can do a cool, a cool look like that too by taking the paint out. But I'm gonna go ahead and just add more of this pitch black. And it's been thickening up in my little dish here a little bit. So you can see I have a little bit more control. My clouds are starting to dry slightly, but they're still not completely dry. So I still have a little bit of uh, time to kind of maneuver these branches in here. But that black paint has been in my little container here to the side. So it's, it's had a chance to dry a little bit more. So I have a little bit more control with that. So again, I'm just kind of popping in these trees, not thinking about it. Let's get a little shadow in here. So you can see this green is still wet, so that's kind of blending in as well. And this is why I'm saying if you if you you know if you want this certain kind of look, this wet and wet look, you've got to move fast with this. You've got to kind of work fast with it. You can't uh, can't let it dry because if you let it dry, you won't get this this look. It'll be more like the the dragonfly with lots of dots and blooms. So that is pretty much it. Um, if you wanted to do a little bit of detailing once these dry a little bit you could go ahead with a sharpie and do a little bit of detailing of the tips of those trees if you want to get some really fine branches in there. Um, or if you let the paint dry a little bit more you can kind of get a little bit of these little fine fine branches and all I do is I usually take my brush and kind of pull that paint away and to the center and this allows it to dry a little bit. And it gives me a little bit more control with my my brushwork. So you can see how you can get some, see how much finer it is now than it was the first time I put it in there because the paint was quite heavy or the ink was quite heavy. So go ahead and practice this one if you want. Um, you know, change out your colors if you want. Um, and if you enjoyed this little demo, um, you might like to try some of my online classes where I walk you through all of my process step by step and um, they're only $15 on my website right now and I'm going to try to work on at least one a month so if you do sign up for my newsletter you usually uh, will get a coupon um, when the course goes live so I try to send out a coupon to take the course for $10 so uh, you can go to my website at www www <laughs> dot kelly chassis fine art dot com and that's uh, kelly with an ie so that's it i think i'm done let's go go ahead and throw a little mat on here um, so i hope you enjoyed this little demo make sure you click subscribe if you like the demo so you can see more and i'll try to get some more up here for you so thanks again we hope to uh, paint with you again soon